The 2005 Coca-Cola 600 currently holds the record for most cautions in a single NASCAR Cup race. I remember watching this race live as a kid and man, it was one of the most infamous wreck fest of all time. A total of 22 cautions went out that night. But again, if you didn't hear what I said, let me say it again the most cautions for a single cup race. The actual record for cautions actually took place 13 years prior to that race. This is the most cautions in NASCAR history. Welcome to TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 from Hickory, North Carolina. The last time we were here, it rained us out back in February. Not so today, we got beautiful sunshine skies. We're about ready to go racing. The NASCAR Busch Series was supposed to run the 1992 Mountain Dew 500 at Hickory Speedway a couple months prior. However, Mother Nature had other plans and it led to the race's cancellation. The race was rescheduled for April 18th with most of the drivers able to return. Little did anyone know that this race would be a record breaker. We're getting ready to go green for the first of 300 laps. Steve Grissom leads them down to the green with Earnhardt alongside. And they swap a little bit of paint down in one and wind up out of two. Big wreck right here coming on the fourth turn. Richard Lassiter and Ricky Craven. Craven in the DuPont finishes car and the innkeeper Pontiac of Richard Lassiter. The first caution came out when Ricky Craven spun his Chevy coming off of turn four. Once green flag racing resumed, Dale Sr. took the lead from Steve Grissom and held it for 11 laps. But then, another caution flew. Look at this one, as here is Jeff Green coming down the front straightaway, Neil. Mike, it looks like he makes a move the outside of Jeff Gordon. I don't think Jeff Gordon saw him. He was trying to move the outside of the car in front of him. And when you get out of that loose stuff right there, there's nothing he can do but just hang on. The damage from that wreck was too much to overcome, and Jeff Green would unfortunately be the first driver to DNF in this wreck fest. But after a third caution involving Tommy Houston spinning off of turns three and four, the red flag flew. And this is the part in the story where it starts to get more and more hilarious, because the day before, turns three and four had actually been resurfaced. Uh, if we can get maybe get a camera on this stuff, this is just a few of the pebbles that you're seeing. This is all through, uh, starting into turn three, all the way through three, the middle of three and four, and all the way off. There's only one lane on the racetrack. If the camera can see, you can see where these cars have, have skidded up there in the wall. Once they get up into that stuff, there's no controlling the race car. You're absolutely at the mercy of, of G-forces and gravity. Just whenever it wants to stop, it's going to stop. And that's it. Uh, this is a mess down here. So let's break it down. You have a one groove racetrack that had turns three and four resurfaced the day before the race. Why track management and NASCAR thought that would be a good idea to do, I have no clue. And as expected, three laps after the red flag had flown, we have our fourth caution. Trying to clean up the track did not help during the red flag period. And as a result, we were only getting green flag stints of around three to four laps. A little further back and trouble again. Ed Free is up there at turn four. Caution. Can I guess which corner? <laughs> Calamity corner. Turn three. Here we go again. And Jeff Gordon's in trouble. A lot of smoke from the baby Ruth car. Rear end, Neil? Yeah, it looks like it's coming out of the rear of the car. Still under power. Looks like he's putting a lot of grease down. It's going to be hard to tell if it's any slicker or not, but looks like he might be putting a little bit of oil down on the edge of the track off the track down in turn two down to the inside and will not be able to limp that car around back to pit road caution is out so not only do we have a bad racing surface, but we also have oil on the track now. This is not going to get better. After the sixth caution, we had a brief red flag period because the surface in turns three and four needed attending to yet again. But after that caution, we actually got some green flag laps in for a little, oh my gosh, never mind. And whoa, what is that guy doing? He almost took out the leaders. We had two spins in two different turns the 98 of Jim Brown entering turn two, as well as the 48 of Jack Sprague entering turn three. Seven cautions in 85 laps. Guess where it went. Yeah, uh, he and Ward Burton were battling along and Ward kind of helped that cover along and off. Well, it's kind of cosmetic, didn't much need it anyway. Off it went. And guess who came along well, the lap later and scooped it up. It's not off yet, but he's gonna lose it coming up the back straightaway here. Yep. He went ahead and clipped it the rest of the way. Did him a favor. He chopped there the rest of the way off. And thunk right underneath the front of Todd Bodine's car. Caution 10. That's Richard Lassiter. And is that Kenny Wallace? It is. 
and company. Kenny gets the lap down as a result. Caution 10. We've had so many cautions that even TNN couldn't even find some on the replay. They keep coming left and right. But as for the actual racing up front, it's fairly, oh my gosh, we can't catch a break. We cannot catch a break. Just when the racing is starting to get good up front, the caution comes out. Trouble in two, Jim bound. The 98 car, caution. Lap 120. Caution 12. And counting. <laughs> we're, there's no doubt we're going for the record. Trouble. Tom Peck gets it loose, got batted around. No, he gets going again. We'll stay green. No, we won't. Jim Bound, turn three. That's Jim up near the wall. And number 13. You know, I've been fishing when you catch two at a time. A lot of times two people in a boat. But this is the first time I've been racing, and there's a caution in each corner every time. 13th uh, yellow flag of the day. Now getting back to the little racing we have seen thus far, Steve Grissom was looking extremely dominant at first. But as we get further and further into the race, his car begins to fail. Oh, oh my gosh. Again. You can't even talk about the actual racing at all because the cautions keep coming and coming in. Oh my god. Get this 98 off the track for God's sake. The 98 of Jim Brown has been an absolute fool throughout the entire race, yet NASCAR is still allowing him to make laps on track. Just past the race's halfway point, and we have had 15 cautions in total. The home track hero, Tommy Houston, who spun out earlier, is trying his best to get his lap back. Unfortunately for him, leader Jimmy Hensley is having none of it. And here comes Hensley right back at Tommy Houston, and the hometown hero is gonna come around around on the front bumper of Jimmy Hensley's car. A tough, tough day for the Houston. I tell you what, that was a set of, you know, they both wanted that inside lane and he saw that nose in there and all he could do was turn left and try to hold him off to get that lap back and neither one of them wanted to give the inside lane up. My list of caution is going to page two at 16 caution flags for lap 162. Mike, usually on these short track races, when you see bumping and beating and banging at the level we see it today, they put them in the penalty box. But the only problem, I don't think there'd be a car left on the track if we started penalizing people for bumping. It's just a part of the game today. And I'm telling you, there's no way to race out there without getting these cars into each other. To correct the late Neil Bonnet, there's no way we can race at all. Spins from both Ed Furry and Jeff Burton brought out the 17th and 18th cautions of the day, meaning that we are now one caution away from tying the record. This wasn't a caution, but this is proof that even the leaders aren't even safe. While battling for the lead, Robert Presley caught a little bit of air from Jimmy Hensley, forcing him out of the groove. A few laps after that the record tying caution came out and that's the big oh, trouble in one and give that one to jimmy spencer yeah jimmy got into the back of labani's they got down in the corner there or up under him a little bit well we tied the record at lap 187 19 caution flag turn one steve boley the iowa driver and he had help so the 20th caution of the day is up. And we have a new caution record. Tracy Leslie and Mike Wallace collided entering turn three, bringing out the 21st caution of the evening. On the restart, Robert Presley led them down to the green flag. At this point late in the race, it's pretty much all about survive. Oh my God, stop! Will someone get the freaking 98 off of the track? That is the fourth incident he has been involved in. And this is the part where NASCAR officiating gets extremely stupid. So while the 98 has been involved in four incidents throughout the day, the leader Robert Presley ended up getting a freaking black flag because his back bumper was hanging. Even though there have been multiple cars with pieces of sheet metal hanging off, whether it's the front bumper or their back one. But then what makes this even funnier is that the 22nd caution of the day came out for somebody's front bumper falling right off. Even though it was hanging off for multiple laps, he didn't get a black flag, yet somehow the leader did. But after that caution, we got our longest green flag stint of the day, a whopping 24 laps. Yay, actual racing! The hometown favorite, Tommy Houston, was on the comeback trail. 
he was once multiple laps down and is now the race leader. But all good things must come to an end as the 23rd caution came out for Jay Fogelman's spin coming off of turn 4. The black flag earlier pretty much ruined the rest of Robert Presley's race. He did his best to try and get back up front and did for a brief moment until he took himself out. The final two cautions of the day involved Butch Miller getting dumped and both Jack Sprague and Jimmy Spencer tangling entering turn 2. In the end, Hickory Speedway's hometown hero Tommy Houston walked away with the victory. At his home race track where he started his career and has won track championships, he's the winningest Bush Grand National driver since the series started in 1982 at this racetrack and he takes the checkered flag for his eighth Bush Grand National victory at Hickory. The new record for NASCAR cautions was now officially 26. An insane amount of cautions that, as of this upload, has yet to be broken. And to be quite honest, I don't think we're ever going to see this record be broken. The closest race that came to breaking this record was during the 2007 NASCAR Busch Series race at Memphis Speedway Park. A total of 25 cautions came out that day, just one shy of tying the record. But that was over a decade ago. And even though we've had multiple races get into the 20s in terms of cautions, a lot of factors played in into this race becoming the record breaker. The race being rescheduled, leaving very little practice time, and part of the track being resurfaced the day before the race was set to take place. So unless we have those two factors coming into play again, I doubt we will ever see this record be tied or broken. You may have certain races that you definitely consider to be wreck fest, but none will ever top the chaotic race that was the 1992 Mountain Dew 500, a race that holds the record for the most cautions in NASCAR history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.